Speaking of controversy, some, another controversy happening is some drama in the fat positivity movement. This woman came forward and is now regretting being part of it and is getting a ton of backlash from um, fat activists, which is a very funny phrase. Um, but this video is killer. I love this TikTok. So let's watch this. I'm going to say something controversial and I don't care. I don't care how trendy or cute or fun it seems to be fat. Don't let that shit fuck with your head. Don't let the idea that, oh, I could catch a dick no matter how big I am, cause you to forget about your health and to keep gaining weight. I actually feel kind of guilty for being a part of this movement. And I know it's not my fault or my responsibility to keep other people's health. But being a pioneer in this game, like I literally was one of the first influencers to work with Fashion Nova before they even had a plus size line. So when I say I'm a pioneer, I'm a pioneer. I'm one of the main reasons why we have the plus size fashion industry that we have. And you could argue with anybody, that's the truth. And my point is, is that I see a lot of fat girls who gain a lot of weight from being caught up in this movement and turning around five, six, seven years later talking about, damn, I let my health go to shit. I got this problem now. I'm 400 pounds. I can't do this. I can't do that. Babe, it's not all it's cracked up to be. Being attractive, being able to still wear nice clothes is not the end all be all. You got to really think about your health. Because when you're in your 20s, you think that life is just rainbows and candy. You don't even think about the future. But when you start creeping up in age, babes, it's going to catch up to you. I don't care what nobody say. I'm not saying that every fat person is unhealthy. Hello, I'm fat. I'm not claiming that you got to hate fat people. That's literally the opposite of what I'm saying. But let's be fucking for real. Health is real. Organs failing is real. Diabetes, heart disease, all that shit is real, okay? It's not fat phobic to care about your health. And if nobody else wants to say it, let me fucking tell you the truth. Love yourself at any size. Wear the clothes you want to wear. But don't forget that your heart has to beat, babes. Don't forget that your blood sugar has to keep a balance, babe. No amount of Instagram pictures looking cute and being an influencer wearing a size whatever you are is going to stop your heart from not beating if you eat in bacon every day. And this is coming from someone who's learning those fucking, those, those, those lessons now, myself. So to the younger girls, the younger generation, take care of your health. It's not fat phobic to take care of your health. It's not a joke. And I'm saying this out of love, not out of self-hate. I see a lot of my fellows, fellow content creator, fellow plus size, fellow bloggers, whatever you want to call them, plus size models, now talking about wanting to get healthy, now talking about needing to da-da-da-da. Because five, six, seven years ago when they were 22, when they were 21, 25, it wasn't a problem. Now you're 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, whatever the case is, and you're like, damn, I can't get pregnant. I'm getting, I have this problem. I got that problem. The problems creep up, babe. And the reality is loving yourself also includes taking care of your body. If you want this body to last 100 years, you got to take care of it. So don't let me, don't let nobody else convince you that taking care of your health is fat phobic. And if somebody's telling you that, it's because they're miserable and they want you to die and stay fat like them. I took a lot of heat when I started talking about my weight loss journey and now everybody else suddenly want to talk about it. I wonder why. Wow. Shout out to Gabriella Lascano. I believe her name is. Um, that was real as hell. And she was absolutely right. You know, this is the main problem. And I hope that this represents sort of like a U-turn in the fat positive movement because she's absolutely right. The idea that taking care of your health is fat phobic is just so disgusting. And I see this a lot. You know, you saw it when like Lizzo talked about like losing weight, which first of all, she didn't, I guess. I mean, she, she, she didn't lose weight. Um, but when Adele lost weight and you see it when celebrities try to lose weight and all of a sudden all these fat fans want to, by the way, I'm not saying like fat as a pejorative, like they call themselves fat and actually they objectively are fat. Um, come forward and attack them and say that they're being fat phobic and that they're promoting diet culture and diet culture. Oh, so restricting calories for the sake of health when you're morbidly obese is, is toxic. Is a diet culture? Like get out of here. Um, she's absolutely right. You know, and that's the thing. It's like, do you see fat activists in their sixties? Do you see fat activists in their fifties? Do you even really see fat activists in their like mid forties? No. Because you actually don't live that long being morbidly obese. And that's just a fact. So I struggle to think of many movements more toxic than a movement where none of the participants live past 45. 
there was a story recently of, uh, you know, like a TLC star or something who was like fat and she died. And, and you see people that are part of these my 900 pound lives and all these, you, you know, fat glorifying shows, even though often they do have an element of like the journey of losing the weight as well. They often, it's just a freak show TV show. And it's just to show someone being morbidly fat and it's a, a spectacle. Um, and they die because you can't be morbidly obese and be healthy. You just can't. You can't even really be like super overweight and be healthy because there's, there's overweight, there's morbidly obese. That's different. There's overweight. Even if you're overweight, it's unhealthy. Is it to the same extent as being morbidly obese? Of course not. But it is what it is. And I really applaud her. I think she deserves a standing ovation for coming forward and talking about this because I think that she will actually save lives from doing that. Because one of the really kind of gross aspects of the fat positive movement from what I've seen from all these TikToks is that it's not just that you have these like fat people all of it it's always women by the way it's never men part of this movement it's always women and it's almost always white women why like it's just food for thought tell me why I mean it's of course there are other you know races involved but it's it's primarily white women so, you know, it's not just that they're fat and like proud of it or, you know, being fat positive, body acceptance, whatever. It's also that they get in this gluttonous state of getting more fat because they're already in that. Like once you tell yourself, I'm fine just the way I am. It doesn't matter how fat I am. You get fatter. You get bigger. You only gain weight. And I've seen that. And so, you know, I have a lot of empathy for people in that position because I think it takes a particular darkness to even get to the point of such pessimism such lack of hope such lack of willpower that you give up on being healthy and convince yourself that being in a state of morbid obesity is healthy because I don't think that even one of them believe it believe it right like they just don't it's the same way that when you see trans activists say trans women are biological women, I actually don't think they believe that. They go through all these hoops to, be to believe that. So they'll say, well, they're biological beings and they're women, so they're biological women. And they go through hoops. Oh, being morbidly obese is healthy because my heart's beating, because being anorexic isn't healthy. Okay, and no, one, no one's saying anorexia is healthy. No one's saying being very thin is healthy. You think anyone's talking about how Eugenia Cooney is healthy? And Eugenia Cooney has a whole lot more people criticizing her for being skinny as even in the world, like just a pile of bones. She gets way more hate and people going after her for that than any fat positive person gets. Let's be real. It's viral video after viral video talking about how Eugenia is so skinny. Clickbait after clickbait, picture of her in the thumbnails. I've done it too. Ain't nobody, like more people go after her than fat people. So... Again, I applaud her for being real. Like, health is wealth. Health is so important. You get so much power out of prioritizing health. I've recently been on like more of a health kick than usual. And I appreciate people who are saying that they see it in me. I see some comments saying, Blair, your body's looking really good lately. Or Blair, you're looking just healthier or whatever. I've been, you know, just taking more into account. You know, I'm 29. I felt personally attacked by her saying, once you hit 20, 29, 30, things start going downhill. It's true. I'm 29 and a half, 29 and maybe three quarters. Um, and, you know, I just want to make sure that I'm healthy, especially with, you know, being trans or certain, um, you know, things I want to avoid. I'm more at risk for, um, you know, blood clotting and, you know, heart issues and things just being on hormones. That's the same as women on birth control. And, you know, there's just certain things that I want to avoid. And so going to the gym all the time is very important to me. Uh, you know, I've been, you know, doing supplements a lot. I've been going to the sauna. I've been eating healthier doing intermittent fasting. And I've just been trying to get on top of that because I feel better when I do it. There was a point maybe six months ago where it wasn't that I was like not caring, but I, no, I, I wasn't caring about my health really six months ago. I mean, I wasn't doing supplements. I was not eating crazy, but I was not eating great. And, you know, I would find it a struggle to even do this podcast. I would find it a struggle to like sit and talk for an hour being long winded and, and like not take any breaks and just the energy and, you know, 
I know it sounds like if you're out there and you have like a special, like a physical job, it's like, you're going to think this is stupid. And I totally get it. You can clown me, but people underestimate how much it actually wears on your body to sit underneath the lights and talk with like, it, it's kind of a lot. It is exhausting. Like when, it, when I, when I am done doing an hour long podcast on the lights and stuff, I feel like I just ran a marathon. Not anymore though. Cause I'm trying to prioritize my health and I'm seeing differences. Um, my energy's way up. And so I want that for everyone. I want everyone to prioritize that. I want everyone to feel great. I want everyone to look great. Um, and I feel bad for people that have like lost such hope in life that they convince themselves that being like this is healthy. Uh, let's continue with, this is a viral fat positive TikTok. This one's crazy. Science doesn't exist. I have a master's degree in this. I get very angry when people start promoting diets in their lives. And I have to go. I can't be around it. I am a fat person and you're attacking me by opening your mouth and saying shitty things about your fat body. Be careful on what you say and what you are perpetuating. Because it's all tied to racism and eugenics. You're being a racist when you start. It kills me when white, fat, positive women want to talk about how it's racist to not want to be fat. This woman's not even just saying what's, you know, her decision was right for her. She's saying you can't talk about yourself being fat. You can't criticize your own body. Screw you. Why do you want to drag everyone down with you? Why do you want everyone to be unhealthy like you? You want everyone to have heart issues like you? To die at 45 like you? I will say this is one of the older fat positive activists that I've seen. She looks to be maybe like late 30s, 40. The harsh reality is you are unlikely to make it another decade, decade and a half like this. And again, I struggle being too mean to these people because, man, you got to be down bad. To sit up on camera talking about, you are attacking me by wanting to not be fat. It is racist to not want to be fat. You got to be down bad. So give me yourself of that. So I'm not trying to crap on her. But I am trying to say, saying that you study science and that's how you know diets are bad. I don't have to study science to look at you and see the lack of health. Right? No one in their right mind, if they wanted to dare to be fat phobic <laughs> and hire a personal trainer and try to improve their life, would hire a fat personal trainer if such a thing exists. Right. If you went to a dietitian who was obese, you would not want to take advice from that dietitian. You don't want to study Chinese if the person trying to teach you Chinese doesn't really know Chinese. This is common sense. So you can sit here and you can, you know, say that you know science. Do you? Because there is a long list of things that you're facing on a health level based on where you're at right now. And again, it's just really sad. You know, it's like, again, we have to talk about how it's like overwhelmingly white women too. I see almost no men and I see very few women of color that are into this. And for me, in a society that values victimhood and where victimhood is such a currency, which it is. You have to be blind not to agree. This is a way for white women, white liberal women specifically, to gain a victim card, to say, oh, you're fat phobic. Oh, me being fat is an identity that is marginalized. I am oppressed. You're not oppressed for being fat. You live in the richest country in the world. 
you live in a country with the most access to healthy foods. This is what always kills me. People who say healthy foods aren't affordable. Really? Because the cheapest things in grocery stores are rice, beans, canned vegetables. Yeah, sure. A Whopper is only a dollar, but... If you care about living a long life, if you care about being there for your family and friends for an extended amount of time, you'll spend $2 on a big bag of rice rather than a dollar on a Whopper. I'm sorry. It, it comes down to personal choice. And people want to invoke the thyroid problems. Okay, but what was the stat? It's like less than like 5% of obese people have a thyroid problem. Like stop. It is absolutely a choice. And I think people also f really underestimate how much eating is a coping mechanism for people as well. Like, I eat when I'm sad. And so that's how I know a lot of people do that. When I'm feeling like depressed, hopeless, whatever, that's when I eat like shit and don't care. That's why you have the trope of like people who like eat a tub of ice cream in a breakup. That That's because people eat their feelings. And that's another thing you have to work through. But it is what it is. I made a conscious choice a few months ago when I started um, prioritizing, prioritizing my health that whenever I'm depressed or going through it or stressed out or sad, I'm going to do things for myself, self-care. So the other day I was having a really bad day. I was super stressed, super depressed. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go to the sauna. I'm going to go work out. I'm going to go get my nails done. And then at the end of that, I'm going to at least be able to say, I worked on my body and I had pretty new nails. So the worst of what the day could have been wasn't as bad as it could have been because I did all these things for myself. And that's a mental thing you have to go through, right? You have to like figure out how to get to the place where you can do that because most people just sink into laying in bed and eating ice cream. And I do that sometimes too. But that's when I feel my worst. That's when I'm like, that's not what I'm supposed to do. I got to get up and just go kill it because no one's going to kill it for me. Ain't nobody going to kill it for you. You got to kill it yourself. Let's watch another one of these. Shut up. It is not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. So for audio listeners, this was a TikTok of a fat activist saying that it is fat phobic to not date fat people. And again, I see so many of these, you know, parallels with the more toxic elements of the trans community. Of course, they say it's transphobic not to date trans people, which is absolutely disgusting. <laughs> um, again, there are plenty of people into fat people. There are plenty of people with fat fetishes. There are plenty of people that are into like thicker women, thicker men, etc. Go find them if you want to be fat. But there is a biological hardwiring in people to be less attracted to fat people, especially fat women because of the lack of fertility that goes with that. The lack of being able to be alive to nurture children. It, it, people don't understand. Sexuality is so much based on evolution. Like the reason men subconsciously seek certain body types of women that, you know, they seek like larger hips not fat but larger hips because that's you know a larger birthing canal you know it's like people are hardwired to be attracted to health to nice skin to the idea that that person will be around for a while to raise offspring that that is the biological hardwire so if someone looks like they're falling apart health wise people are not into that and again you have a choice you can blame that on phobia you can blame that on hatred or you can say, I'm doing something wrong. And if I want to attract men, maybe I need to be the best version of myself to do that. Right? Same with trans people. Men are tra trans people are not wanting to date me. Maybe if you worked hard on your transition, you would find that that changed. In fact, not maybe. Definitely. Right? Because again... Going the theme of this podcast because we're dunking on the right as well. Dunking on the right as well. When they act like, you know, 
everyone's just so disgusted by trans people and no one's to date trans people. Sorry. Trans porn is like one of the most popular porns on the planet, statistically. And also, sorry, going by statistics, you can look this up. In fact, producer, if you could put it on the screen, the same men who watch heterosexual porn watch trans woman porn. The viewers of trans man porn are statistically gay men. Buck Angel, trans man porn star, has an overwhelmingly gay male audience. So again, it's not that everyone hates trans people. It's that these trans people who put no effort in their transition aren't seeing the results they want and assume it means that people are hating them. No. Big secret here. And a big reason why people were very mad at my bikini picture, people actually are very sexually attracted to passable trans women. In fact, they are highly fetishized. So again, people aren't fat phobic. They're attracted to healthy women and you are not one. But again, I have a lot of empathy for these women because it must suck. Hey, if you guys enjoyed that short clip from the podcast, make sure you guys subscribe to this channel as well as my main channel and watch the full episode, which will be somewhere on the screen.